from the period clearly states the transaction. So note the difference in question requirements. The first one said, show the effect. So we use increase and we use decrease. And we state the effect on the elements and which item within the element is affected and by how much. In this instance, it has shown the effect and it's asking us to write out clearly the transaction that has occurred. Take note of that. If you have a question like this, it has shown the effect and we have to write out what transaction has really occurred. In this previous examples, we have been given the transactions. Paid this, bought this, sold this. These are transactions that have occurred. And we're supposed to show the effect. Now, we have the effect here, and we are supposed to show, write out the transaction. Okay, so how do we do that? If you look at the extreme left, you would see all the I asset items there. You would see all the equity and the liability items there. The first column is supposed to be the benchmark for column A. So you benchmark A figures against the first column to see where changes has occurred. Where the changes have occurred, you would notice the amount the amount of change, and you use that to write out the, the statement or the transaction. I repeat, in this instance, the first column becomes the benchmark for column A. And so you compare each of the figures based on the financial statement items to determine where changes have occurred. Where the changes have occurred, you note them and write down the transaction. Please and please, you don't use increase or decrease in this instance. You don't use increase or decrease in this instance. So I'm going to I am going to I am going to look at, do the first column for you, and then we can. For those who are asking of, listen, I have gone past there, unfortunately. If we have time after the class, and you don't have any class after 5.20, I can spare some time and get you and explain it to you. So look at the first column, column A, okay? Where do we find changes? Column A and the benchmark, where do we find changes? Inventory. Inventory. Is that the only place we find changes? And payables. 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 And where? Payables. payables. Yeah. How much is the change? Yeah. For the oh, energy. Please, are we all following? Yes, yes, yes madam. Yes. Payables and where? Inventory. Payables and inventory. So the question is, what transaction has occurred? Who can state the transaction for us? Yes, Louisa. What would work 250 on credit? Exactly, what goods worth 450 on credit? Good, so let's look at B and C, with B being the benchmark. 
And so we are looking at C. So obviously, when we want to look at A and B, A becomes the benchmark. We look at what has happened in B. When we get to C, B becomes the benchmark. We look at what is happening to C. Okay, and that is how we go about it. So between B and C, who would help us? Um, there are some people who will never answer questions in class. Haruna. Haruna. Um, Angela Obenewa. Angela Obenewa. Ellen. Madam, please, what good 1,000 CDs on credit? What good 1,000 CDs on credit? Um, Let's look at where the changes have occurred. Let's look at where the changes have occurred. Please, plant and machinery and yeah. plant and machinery and loan. No, we are looking at B against A. No, we are looking at B against A. Madam, so please, please come again. Me. So please come again. Madam, please, the changes are inventory, receivables, inventory and receivables. Is that all? Is that all? Equity is there. Yes, please. Inventory, receivables, and equity. Inventory receivable inventory and equity. equity. Okay, so now okay, tell so us the transaction. Madam, please, for inventory, sold goods. Um, who will help my to stop? Michael to four. Madam, Madam, please. So goose what uh, six hundred Ghana cities for sorry, so good what five hundred Ghana cities for six hundred Ghana cities on credit. Um so goods worth five hundred Ghana cities for six hundred Ghana cities on credit. Okay, so goods. Worth 500 Ghana cities for 600 on credit. Okay, so um, Michael, could you help us understand why you are saying that is a transaction? Your transaction is correct, but for purposes of those who also have to get an understanding of why you are saying so. Michael. So, um, if you look at this, okay. So explain. Uh, when you, when you look at receivables, hmm. instead of receiving five hundred, it was thousand one hundred. Instead of receiving uh, five hundred, which would be thousand, it was thousand one hundred. Meaning there was hundred cities profit, which affected the equity, which made it fifteen thousand one hundred. Ghana cities. Okay, so again, let me state that anytime you are benchmarking, you look at where changes have occurred. So if you look at column B, you are benchmarking it against A. Okay, A inventory has changed, has reduced from 1,200 to 700. 
Once inventory reduces, it means you have sold out. If inventory increases, it means you have purchased in. Those are the key things. Now you see your receivables, which is debtors. I did mention that when you sell goods on credit to your customers and they are yet to pay, you record them as receivables or debtors. That has increased. And so that is telling us that the goods that we sold was given to some people who bought on credit. But the, the cost of the goods is 500 because the difference between 1,002 and 700 is 500. But the difference between 500 and 1,001 is 600 cities. It means that the goods cost 500, but they were sold to those people at 600, leaving us with a profit of 100 CDs, which would increase our equity. So you'd realize that equity has increased from 15,000 to 15,100. So this is similar to this transaction that we talked about, VI, VI, where we sold goods worth 820 CDs on credit to Aban, okay? So the goods cost us 820, but we sold it a thousand. So Aban is a data receivable and that profit of 180 was sent to equity. So it is a similar transaction for column B. Now let's look at column D. So once we are looking at column D, the benchmark becomes column C. Who would help us out, uh, Raquel Clotty? Raquel Clotty. Janice. Janice. Paul Sabogu. Paul? Yes, madam. So try column D. So the benchmark will be C. Madam took cash of 2,000 Ghana cities to Atai um, um, premises. took cash of 2,000 to acquire premises. Um, let's see. Are you sure? To, to pay for premises. Are you sure? Madam. Yes, there is something missing there. That also, you started well, but one leg of the transaction is incomplete. Uh, Madam. Yes. Um, please sold part of the premises where mm -hmm. 2,000 cities and deposited it in a bank or cash. But is it the same figure? That is one thing you must note. Is the figure equal? Because if Madam. you look at premises is 2,000, if you look at cash, it's 1,900. So there is something there, wrong way. Madam, no, no, please let me try. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Sold premises worth 2,000 Ghana cities at 1,900 in cash. Um, no, so if you sold it at 1,900, what would have happened? means there's a loss. Exactly, but you have not stated the loss. Okay, so you realize that if it is profit, it goes to equity. If there's a loss, it still goes to equity. So in C, equity was 15,100, but in D, it is 15,000. 
So equity has decreased. So there's a loss of 100. So how do you put it in that statement? Madam, please, in the form of discount. It cannot be this. You have said it's a loss. So how can it be discount? Madam, I'd like to draw. OK. Yeah, so sold premises worth 2,000 below market value for 1,900. Yes, that's a good try. But you still have not incorporated the loss of 100 cities in the statement. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Well, okay. It, it will still go for it, but it's sold goods worth, uh, sorry, sold premises or disposed of premises worth 2,000 for 1,900 cash. Okay, because your, when you sell, that is your stock in trade, but premises is not your stock in trade. So you disposed it off, okay? Or you sold premises worth 2,000 for 1,900, okay? It means you have made a loss of 1,000. Somebody would add making a loss of 1,000, okay? But if you understand how you enter, you know that the figures must always be the same. So if they sold it, less than the cost price on the books, then there is a loss and that will hit your equity. Okay. Any other question? So the rest would have to go and try. Um, we cannot spend the whole two hours doing this. There is another one. Everybody should go and try his or her hands on it. I have just showed you how to go about it. And so you only have to do it. Accounting is about practice, practice, practice. I, am, I don't know when the tutorial sessions will begin, but for now, this is the way we have to go about it. And we don't have time to do tutorial sessions because that is not our duty, but we will ask and when we find time, do part of it in class. So please, if you have written all this out, you should go back understand it and then do the others. If you still don't, some of your friends, okay, who have better understanding, please fall on them. There is no first class, there is no first, second, third. If everybody passes and makes an A, it is everybody. So please, those who know, help those who don't so that we can move forward. Madam, please, I have a question. Yes. Please, does every expense affect liability? If it is unpaid. So for the purposes of uh, recording, we are assuming it has been unpaid, so it is liability. Okay. So from the first transaction, which stated um, um, paying for a pair of motor vehicle, it is considered as a liability. Did you see any previous transaction? Um, before um, this one. I am asking, did you see any previous transaction concerning the motor vehicle? Yes, X, I, I say space for repairs of motor vehicle with cash, 100 C. Exactly, so where do you find the, those repairs? If, if it is not liability, where else do you want to put it? I was thinking it would affect equity. Why do you think you should affect equity? Is motor vehicle belonging to the owner? No. So why equity? Okay, remember somebody repaired it for us. So it is that somebody who is captured under liability. We ourselves as a business entity cannot repair motor vehicles. So if somebody has repaired it for us, and we are now paying the person, it is assumed that that has been captured in liability. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, any other? So go through it and then we'll still keep chatting over these things. 
Okay, if you leave it, you would forget it. That's just the rule in accounting. If you leave it one day, it will take you so much time to go through it again. So keep going and working at it. I know there's pressure on you people, okay? But we still have to work. Leave your phones, stop watching the series and focus. That is all it takes, okay? And I'm saying this because I have some in my house, okay? Now you just have to drop all the phones, stop all the series and be on the books, okay? Within the next six weeks, you are back home and you can decide to watch till thy kingdom come. Okay, so today we want to look at the accounting process. What we have just done, especially with the effect on the accounting equation, I told you is a, a jump from transactions all the way to the, the report, okay? And that is a quicker way of doing it. I did mention again that even though accountants can do that, it is a lot of work, okay? And so that is not a recommended thing to do in practice. And so what we do in practice is to go through the accounting process, okay? So the first day we defined accounting as a process that begins with the recording of transactions. Of course, the end product will be what we have just done, the effect. Although that takes a process, we will still end up seeing those changes in the statement of financial position. So we want to look at the, how the process begins and how we go through that process as technocrats to end in showing that effect. Okay, at the end of this session, we expect that people should be able to identify the books of accounting and their nature and purpose. What books do we use in the recording process? We hope to be able to identify the kind of transactions that we record in each type of book and then record transactions in the books of original entry. The reading list we have, okay, please take note of them. And so every profession has its own terminolo terminologies, okay, that we must know. In accounting, the first books that we record in are known as the prime books or the books of original entry or journals. These are the first point of recording. We keep the books in them, in the transactions in them. So transactions are first recorded in the prime books or the books of original entry or the journals. Now from that point, they are posted to the ledgers. Okay, so these are the two main books of accounting that that is used in recording transactions. So know them, the journals and the ledgers, okay? Now, what is the book of original entry or the journal? Now, it's just, it's just a normal book. You can take an exercise book and rule it in, okay? It is just the terminology that is used or that is peculiar to the field of accounting. So the journal is just a book which records details of transactions in, an, in order. So today, how the transactions occur will be recorded as and when they occur. We don't keep transactions to the end of day to record, no. Neither do we wait for an event to occur before, no. Immediately the transaction happens, we have to record. So all the transactions we talked about could be recorded, okay, in journals. And we will come back to that again, okay? So all those transactions, we can open a book, which we are calling a journal, and record them in order of date. If you notice, for what we did, there was no date. And so 
we couldn't put date, but immediately there is date. We would have to put the date in and provide some details of the various transactions so that anytime those books are paid, we can be able to identify the transactions and relate with it, whether we initiated it or not. So they are also known as the day books because it contains the account of every day's transaction. Okay, it contains the accounts of every day's transaction. What are the characteristics of a journal? Let us note that it is the first successful step of recording and it precedes the double entry. We call that on Tuesday, we talked about the double entry. The fact that accounting affects two items. If you look at the transactions that we just went through, at every point, there are two items that it is affecting. Whilst one is decreasing, one is increasing. Another one is increasing, another one is increasing. These are, that is double entry. Every transaction must be entered twice. And so if you look at the transactions that we did and talked about the effect, you'd realize that sold goods to Ningo on credit or purchased goods from Ningo, we are purchasing goods inventory. That is one of them. On credit, it means Ningo is the second item. And once we record it, that is double entry. Transactions are recorded twice. You will come back to that later. But for now, we are saying that the journal records comes before the double entry system. More or less, the journal record only records a single entry. So you record what has happened and you provide some details and keep it at that. Okay. It is recorded on the day it occurs and the transactions are recorded in a chronological order. Mm -hmm. What are the advantages of a journal? Okay. Each transaction is recorded as soon as it takes place. So the chances of omitting some transaction is very low. It's minimized. Okay. In the past, we used to have these big books and people sit around it doing the recording. Today, because of softwares, you see people sitting behind some laptops or computers and they are capturing. If you go to the bank, immediately you give that check for a withdrawal, the cashier or the teller would have captured that and it goes straight into the journals and the ledgers. And so today, you don't really see it, but in the past, journals were very big books and somebody had to write out every transaction that occurred during the day with some narrations, okay? With some narrations. It also helps to keep the ledger tidy and brief, okay? The ledger tidy and brief and tells the complete story of the transaction in one entry, okay? Therefore, any mistake that you make in the subsequent entry, which is the double entry in the ledger, can always be traced back, okay, to the, to the journal. Okay, so that is the essence of the journal. Now let's look at some types of journals. We have the sales day book or the sales journal. Now the sales journal records transactions for credit sales. Take note of that. It's as easy and straightforward as that. Credit sales are recorded in the sales journal as the first step. And credit purchases, and when I say credit sales, it is just goods that we have sold as a business entity for which we would pay later. For credit purchases, it is just purchases we have bought from our suppliers. So if um, 
Business, I stand with you, account 205. We go to our suppliers to buy water, okay? And we tell them we will pay at the end of the month. Then, because we are not paying now, we will have to record it in the purchases day book or the purchases journal. Return inwards day book. Anytime custom, uh, the business sells to its customers, it is able to accept returns for default goods or for goods that doesn't meet its specification. And so because of that, businesses allow customers to return. When they return to the business, it's known as returns inwards book. When the business also goes to purchase outside from its suppliers and finds that it doesn't meet their specification, they can also return it. And when the business entity returns it to its suppliers, it is known as the returns outwards. And it to be recorded in the returns outwards day book, okay, or journal, okay. Then the cash book is also, could also be used, which records the payment and receipt of transactions on cash basis. So because the sales day book records transactions on credit, all others which occur using cash will be recorded in the cash book. So if I stand with you account, sales goods on for cash, 2000, it will not go into the sales journal. It will go into the cash book because that is a cash transaction, okay? Not a credit transaction. The other journal is the general journal, the general journal. Now, the general journal, okay, captures all other items and unusual transactions that don't relate to the everyday activity of the business. So if the business is dealing in <clears throat> drinks, then the purchases and sale of drinks would constitute what will go into the sales and purchases journal and the cash book. But if the business goes to buy a van for purposes of transporting its product, that will go into the general journal because it is an unusual transaction. The purchasing of motor vehicle does not occur on a regular basis, okay? And that will be recorded in the general journal. What, on what basis do we record in these journals? Okay, we record in these journals based on the source documents, okay? And source documents provide evidence of the occurrence of the transaction. In accounting, it is very, very important for us. Why? Because the auditors may also come to do a review of that, to make sure that people are not just recording non-existing transactions. And so the source documents, okay, are just evidential matter, which becomes the basis of recording in our day books. And examples of source documents include the purchase or the sales invoice, receipts, okay, receipts from payment of cash, okay. Um, if you go to ShopRite to make some purchases, that printout that they give you is a, is a source document. If you go to request for the cost of an item, that invoice they give you can become a source document. When there is returns, because businesses are trading continuously, sometimes when you return the goods, whether return inwards or outwards, they don't give you your money. They give you a note to suggest that you have returned some goods, and so we either owe you or we have to give you money, okay? And so debit note is when the goods are returned to the supplier. It means that the business entity went to buy, went to purchase the goods. 
and have cause to return it. Okay, so the supplier will give them a debit note. Okay, that is it. Showing the amount debited to the account of the purchaser, which is the business entity. Now, when customers, those we have also sold to, also return goods to us, we cannot pay them, okay, immediately because we are still in business. So we give them a note, which we call the credit note, to suggest that, look, for this goods that you have returned, you have some credit with us. So the next time we have to supply you, we adjust our payment to reflect that. So that is the debit and the credit note, which becomes the source document for returns. For bank transactions, we can use the checkbook. Okay, you know, most checkbooks have the counter for that small part that we write, okay, <clears throat> there. You can also pick the bank statement and pick up transactions that have occurred. That it could also be a source document. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is how the journal is ruled. The purchases or the sales journal. This is how it is ruled. Okay. So it is not ruled like an account. It is just a book that has been divided into sections, which has a date column, the details or the particulars of the transaction that has occurred, okay, the reference. <coughs> so the reference is, you, you would realize that most receipts and invoices are numbered. So you could refer to the type of document that became the source document, okay, and you put it there. Then the ledger folio. Now the ledger folio <clears throat> shows that I, I did indicate earlier on that from the journal, these transactions are posted to the ledgers. And so if you want to know which of the ledgers, you would have to okay, state the ledger folio and the page number. Those days, they were very fat, big books. And so it was very difficult to flip through looking for some transaction. And so you have to state the folio number that will help you cross reference where to locate the transaction in case there is an issue. So that is it and then the amount of it, okay? Then beneath it, you write the narration. So that is a journal. On top of it, you have the name of the journal if it's a purchases or a sales journal or a returns journal, okay? So that is how a journal is ruled. Kindly take note of it. We will start ruling it next uh, on Tuesday, God willing, okay, to start the recording process, okay, as we start. Then we also have the general journal, okay? So that what we've seen here relates to the sales purchases and the returns journal. The other journal is what we refer to as the general journal. And the general journal normally has an opening and a closing entry. The opening entries, okay, relate to when a business wants to open its books for the year. Every business begins with assets and liabilities, okay, before the new accounts are opened in the ledgers. So those opening balances you will find in the general journal. That is where they will be captured, okay, before it's sent to the various ledgers. Then we have the closing entries. At the end of the accounting period, okay, when businesses want to prepare their reports or final accounts, all the balances would have to be transferred. And so the general journal would capture all those in order to transfer them to one of the main 
okay, reports, which is the profits and loss account, the trading account. And all this we'll see practically as we go along. Okay, now what does the general journal capture? I already told you that it captures unusual or rare transactions. Okay, so I gave you an example of a motor vehicle for I stand with you account 205 company who is acquiring a motor van or sorry, a motor vehicle for delivery purposes. Now you don't expect that every month they would acquire a new motor vehicle. So we refer to acquiring a motor vehicle once, maybe every two, three, four years as a rare transaction for purposes of recording in the general journal. Okay, it is not your core business, unless you are a dealer in motor vehicle, then that becomes your core business. And for that, you would record in the sales and purchases journal. But the motor vehicle that you would use for purposes of your business, that one will be recorded in the general journal. Aside that, there are times when you sell a business entity sells to its customers. And over a period, you expect them to pay. You have sent reminders consistently. There is still non-payment. In accounting, you are required okay, to write off those debts after a period, okay, and after fulfilling with all righteousness everything you have to do to make sure they pay and they still fail to pay, okay, you write it off. And that's what we, when we say you are writing it off, it means you take that amount off your records. Other than that, it keeps occurring, it keeps showing up. Meanwhile, the people have refused intentionally or unintentionally to pay. So after a while, the policy is that you clear it off your books, okay? And when that happens, then you'd have to pass that entry through the general journal. Another thing you would find in the general journal happening is when there are errors. In the course of recording in the books, you would re realize that there are times when, as human as we are, we have committed some errors. Okay, an error could be turning figures. Instead of 52, you are written 25. It could be uh, transposing the figures, there are so many errors, okay? And when they are detected, you rectify it through the journal or the general journal, okay? You rectify it through that. The last one you will find in there is the fact that there are some transactions that need to be adjusted at the end of the year or the accounting period. I'll give you an example. If 28th or 30th December, your year end is 31st December. Meanwhile, on 30th December, you have some bills that have just been brought in that relates to December. Once it relates to December, based on the matching concept, you may have to match it to December. However, you are unable to pay. You would have to adjust, okay, the figure for the bills to reflect the amount payable in December, even though you may have paid in January. And so these are adjusting entries and which would also find its way in the general journal, okay, to find its way in the general journal. Now, other special transactions, okay, that have no journals, but would also be pushed or be recorded in the general journal, include distributing goods as free samples. So I know it doesn't happen very often in our part of the world, but in the developed countries, there are times where, especially perfumes, that they have developed miniature pieces with the intention of distributing it, okay? And the cost of that, okay, does not fit in purchases or sales journal. And so would be pushed 
and their general journal. Again, businesses at times distribute free goods. Today, that is what we are referring to as corporate social responsibility. Okay, corporate social responsibility. And so they also don't fit under purchases or sales, and so might also find its way in the general journal. Okay, goods destroyed by fire, goods stolen by employees, okay, at a point you're unable to account for the goods, and so you would have to just treat them as theft. They would all find themselves in there. If you exchange one asset for the other, okay, without some monetary value, it will go in there. How do we rule the general journal? Let me say that with respect to the general journal, the format is similar to all the other journals, except that the general journal has two columns, okay, one for debit and one for credit. And so we can say that the general journal begins the double entry. Though it is a journal, but it, it's, it has the double entry. It captures transactions twice. Okay, it captures transaction twice. And so behaves like a ledger. Okay, but it is a journal. Okay. So again, it has the date, it has the details, it has the ledger folio, it has a debit column, and it has a credit column. Okay, these are the two columns for the general journal. Most often it will state the account to be debited and the account to be credited. Let us recall the double entry. For every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. That is the basic rule. And how do we find those debit and credit? Again, you would have to look for the two items affected in a transaction. So let's go back to the transactions we just looked at earlier on. Okay, and I stand with you, account 205, purchase goods from Ningo Limited on credit, or purchase motor vehicle from Ningo Limited. There, you'd realize that on, on credit, immediately the purchase motor vehicle, who is receiving the motor vehicle? Okay, the business entity is taking custody of the motor vehicle. And so they would have to debit the motor vehicle, okay? And they are yet to pay, so it's a liability. So you credit the transaction with the amount, okay? We would look at that later. Yes, Musa? Musa? Musa, are you speaking up? Musa, I thought Musa has had his hand up. Okay. Okay. Florence, I haven't locked the group. The issue is that once you are off, I haven't locked the group. Okay. If I'd locked the meeting, now I have locked the meeting, no one can join. So let me go back and see. But initially, I didn't lock it. So I'm wondering why. So it says new participants can join. So they should try and see. But I haven't locked the group. So that is the general journal, OK? ruled in this way and we have the narrations which would explain what actually happened. Now another journal or another book which we have had, <clears throat> okay, is the cash book. When we're treating the breakdown of current assets, we realized that one of the items is cash, which is an asset, okay? And we have said that anytime you have an asset increasing, you debit it, 
anytime you are receiving cash, you have to debit the cash book or the cash account. And anytime you are paying out cash, you credit it. Why? Because all assets have debit balances. What that means is that an asset, according to the business, is anything the business owns. So when it is increasing, it is coming in. And so if we're doing an account, <clears throat> anytime the asset is increasing, we should be debiting the asset account. Recall our last slide on Tuesday, which explained it. I'll come back to that slide, <clears throat> I'm sure, in the next lecture to explain it more when we have practically, when we have to practically record. <clears throat> okay, so just get the basic understanding. When we come to the practical recording session, we would highlight more on that. Okay, so anytime we are receiving cash, because it is an asset, okay, and it is increasing, then we have to debit it. I guess by now, we should know how an account is. Um, we would have to try and use our board here. This is an account. So <coughs> this is debit. And this is the credit side. So this can be our cash book. Okay. So this is our cash book and it can be the cash account as well. And um, let me say that the cash book is, can be used as a journal and as a ledger, okay? It can be used as a journal and as a ledger. So it is a book, also a book of original entry, meaning that it is a journal in which transactions relating to only cash receipts and payment are recorded in detail. Okay, so when cash is received, I just talked about that, it is entered on the debit or the left-hand side. So you'd realize in the diagram I just drew, that on the, what I've put there as debit is on your left-hand side. That rule does not change. Every account or book that you have to rule as an account, the debit is always on the left-hand side and the credit is always on the right-hand side. So in the transaction that we did, assuming I stand with you account 205 limited, sold goods, okay, on cash, for cash, 250. Then we would have put the date here, recall that if it is a journal, we will still have to draw the date. So we have the date. We have the folio number. We can have the details. And we can have the amount. Um, pardon me for the crooked drawings. So, we can have our date. We can have our folio number, ledger folio. We can have the details. Uh, 
and we can have amounts, okay, amounts. So, so this is how we can move the cash book, okay, similar to what we have. We can do that on the credit side. So if the transaction we have on, on third, third April 21, okay, we bought goods. So here we have stock, you can write stock and the amount, the amount is maybe 500, okay. Now it will be sold, it will be sales. So normally when we sell, that is when we bring in cash. So sales, 500. Straight away, we would realize that the date is there we made sales of 500 cash. It means we paid cash. And so we are receiving cash. But what is the purpose of the 500 cities? It means that we sold goods. If on another day, similar drawings, okay, 10th, um, 10, 4, 21, maybe, pardon me if I don't rule, maybe we, we paid, um, we paid rent, okay, let's assume the rent we paid, amount was 250. So that will become our transaction for 10th. Of course, the folio number would make reference to the sales book, the sales ledger, so that when we go there, we can identify and cross-reference it. Similarly, there is maybe a book for rent which we can refer to it. And so this is how the sales or the cash book is ruled if we have to use it for being either a journal or a ledger, okay? So in the journal, it is cash book. In the ledger, it will be a cash account, okay? So it can serve both purposes. Now, the cash book can have various types. The first one is the single column cash book. Okay. The single column cash book has only one column for cash. As I just drew there, only one column. And that column will record cash transactions, bank transaction, but it's strictly anything that has to do with cash receipts and payment, whether actual cash or through the bank it will all go through the cash book, okay? So just the column is cash. So if I pay by check, it will also go to that column. That is a policy. That is how some organization would want to use their cash book. Nobody can stop you, okay? And obviously that would be for smaller organizations that don't engage in so many transactions. Then we also have the two column cash book. So in the two column cash book, they have a column for bank transactions and they have another column for cash transactions. So like what I do, instead of only cash, i would have to draw another column for bank transactions, okay? For bank transactions. Or in some instances, the second column can be used for discount. I would explain discount shortly, okay? So that is it. In the other column, then we also have the three column cash book. And in the three column cash book, there is a column for cash transactions, strictly cash. There is another column for check or bank transactions. And there is a third column for what we call discount. The question is, what is discount? Now with regard to the cash book, refer to it as cash discount. Cash discount is just an amount of money that is given or received by the business organization for prompt payment. Okay, I'll take it again. An amount of money that is given either by the business entity or received by the business entity for prompt payment of either goods purchased 
or goods sold. So <clears throat> I would explain further. If I stand with you limited, which is the separate legal business entity, sells goods to its customer and informs the customer that, look, if you pay before one month, take 10 CDs off or take 100 CDs off the 1,000 CDs worth of goods, that 100 CDs becomes a cash discount if the customer pays within the appropriate time, time frame, okay, outlined in the contract or in the payment terms. So normally there will be a payment terms that would state how much discount you can enjoy if you pay within a stipulated time. And if you, if you fulfill that, then you are given a discount. <clears throat> and so if the business entity sells to its customers, then what it does is that it allows the customers, okay, discount allowed. It allows them the discount. But if the business entity also buys from its suppliers and they give the discount and it takes advantage of the discount, then the business entity is receiving the discount. So that would be discount received, okay, and discount allowed. So we allow our customers the discount, but we receive discount from our suppliers if we also fulfill our part of <clears throat> the payment contract, okay? And that is it. So in the case that you have a three column cash book, then one column is to record the discounts that have been received or allowed. The, the other column will show strictly cash transactions and the third column will show bank transactions, still ruled in the two sides, the debit side and the credit side. Um, do you have a class after this? Definitely not. Do we have a class? No, madam. So we want to finish this so that you can go back and listen. If you have questions, we'll take them yes, in the next we have a class. class. This is the format of a cash book, okay? The single column cash book. <clears throat> so you have the date, the details, the ledger folio cash. This is the debit side, this is the credit side. The double column has the bank and cash. The triple column or the three column cash book has the discount, bank and cash, okay? On the debit and the credit side. Now the last thing book would like to look at is known as the petty cash. Okay, the petty cash book. Similar, yes, Sohini? Ohine. Ohine, your hand is up. Column. Please, madam. Yes. Madam, madam. Yes. Please, madam, what is recorded at the ledger folio? I did mention that the ledger folio, you cross reference Hello, to the ledger, the ledger page or the kind of ledger oh. you have used. Okay. 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 But Thank you, madam. In recent times, okay. because we have softwares, you don't see that. Okay, but in small okay. SME company, okay. you will see that. Okay. The last, oh yes, Thank you. Solomon. Yeah, Madam, please, uh, I want to ask like, if the transaction are given to you, and let's say you have some discount in a transaction, and the question didn't specify whether you should draw the double entry, uh, uh, whether you should draw the three column card before the two column. You are going to identify the one that you should draw what? Of course, Solomon, if you have a discount in the question, then it's expected that you use the three color. Thank you. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, madam. Yes, so that is why we are 
exposing you to it, we will start solving questions next week and hoping that when we are getting there, we would have to do some recording in advance for everybody to listen to before we get there. Otherwise, we will never finish. Okay, so the last one is the Petty Cash Book. Now for the Petty Cash Book, it is a book in which Petty Cash, and when we talk about Petty Cash, it's small cash. A small amount of money is kept in hand. Okay, for expenditures that are of a small nature. Okay, and normally that book or is maintained by a petty cashier. It could also be in a columnar form, okay, with each column allocated to the type of expenditure. And the expenditure types would have been um, agreed upon by management and the amounts that the petty cash can cover or can pay for. So <clears throat> management can agree that any expenditure up to 100 cities will go to the petty cashier. There is no need to go and write out a check or write out something, okay? So the petty cash is just an amount of money, okay? A fixed amount of money that is given to one of the employees known as the petty cashier and who is supposed to pay for all these insignificant transactions that occur on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? On a day-to-day -day basis. Another name for it is the impressed system, okay? So at the end or on regular basis or intervals, that petty cashier will collate all the payments that have been made go back for reimbursement. For instance, if I have been given 500 cities as my petty cash for the month of April, it means that I could pay, be paying petty expenses from the 500. Immediately, I am hitting 450. I have to collate all the transactions, go back to the cashier or the accountant who will check and then reimburse me with the amount spent so far, okay, to still come back to the 500. And so it is always a monthly amount, okay? It is an interest that is retired and then reinvest. When I say retired, it means there is a higher authority who checks the petty cashier. So when you spend 300, you'd have to go with the vouchers to cover the 300 CDs to the cashier or to the officer in charge supervising you for them to cross check and agree. Then they will approve the amount you have spent for you and give it back to you. And then your money becomes 500 again, then you start, okay? So that is how the petty cash works. Now, what are some of the advantages of the impressed system? It acts as a check on the petty cashier, okay? And the books remain up to date because anytime you spend, the question is what are some of the expenditures that you can route through petty cash? These are very minute expenditures. Sometimes they don't have source documents. So for instance, TNT, if the business occasionally sends staff to go and do transactions in town, okay, and the staff doesn't have its own card, okay, for fuel, then the staff would have to pick, okay, public transport. So if the staff decides to pick public transport and you are paid for transport, there is no transport company that gives receipt. So what the petty cashier would do is to give you a form to fill the purpose of the transaction, ask you to write and sign your name against the amount you are receiving and that becomes their source document. Okay, that becomes their source document. <laughs> so the petty cash progress system prevents unnecessary accumulation.
Okay, the petty cash system prevents unnecessary accumulation of cash in hand. Okay, defalcation of cash is also minimized if you use the petty cash system. This is how it is ruled. Okay, on the extreme left, you find the amount received captured with the date and the details. So if it is reimbursement, you will put reimbursement. If it is a check that they gave you to reimburse the figure, you put the check number as reference and the total amount you have. On the right hand side, which looks at the analysis of expenses, you put the kinds of expenses that you are paying for. So like I did indicate, they are very minute expenditure, postage, how much those days, how much do we pay for postage? Okay, stationary items like pens, pencils were very minute, T and T. Okay, perhaps full in lieu of T and T. If you have your own car, it may give you some fuel costs and others. So these are very, very minute expenditures. Okay, and so at the end of every period, you provide an account of it. Somebody asked whether these ones will reflect in the books. And I said, yes, it doesn't mean that when it is here, it doesn't. When we are preparing the accounts, all stationary will go to stationary. TNT will go to the main TNT account. Four will go to the full account if they have a bigger account. Okay, and that is what happens. To conclude, to conclude, this is just a diagrammatic representation of what we have just discussed, the books of accounting for businesses, the starting point. Okay, so you, drill, you see business transactions at the top. Then we need to classify these transactions, that is put them together like items. I uh, like you know can see last time uh, this all credit sales will be entered in the credit the sales day book all credit purchases will go into the purchases day book returns will go okay so you would have to group the transactions into like items and record in the first books of accounts, which are the journals. You see the cash book here, which is recording all cash receipts and payments, and then all other transactions go in the general journal. Now from the journals, I did indicate at the beginning that these transactions will be posted from the journals to the ledgers. So we have the sales ledger, which will capture the sales, the purchases ledger, which will capture the purchases from the purchases day book and on and on and on. Okay, so for now, let's just know that the first books of account are the journals. Okay, know the different kinds of journals, know what is captured in those journals. And then next week, we will start the recording process. So what we did today, this morning, sorry, this afternoon, by way of the effect of the transactions, those same transactions, once we have dates on them, we can record them in the day books, which are the journals. And hopefully we will do that on Tuesday when we meet. Please, I've told you that if you wait, we are getting into the peak time of accounting. If you have not yet grasped it, please do well to find time and catch a friend this weekend to explain the transactions to you. What we do is in accounting, your questions are always a mixture of the written and of computations, okay? Very basic and you need to. Unfortunately, we don't have that time for lecturers, okay, to get to everybody's level of our understanding. So, Fall on your friends, read a text, 
I may be busy sometimes, but I find time to respond to those who need help. Okay, if it takes time, it's because I am quite busy, but so please, I'm looking out for the, the teaching assistants who are supposed to assist you and undertake tutorials. I'm still finding out from um, Dr. Godfrey.